Good day, everybody. My name is Susan Kaldeblom. I'm one of the psychologists at Stabilis Treatment Center. And today I'd like to, to speak to you about self-forgiveness and recovery. When, when you're in recovery, you may be reminded of past experiences whilst abusing a substance um, that may make you feel guilty or that you may even be plagued by feelings or memories of regret about things that you may have done during the time that you were abusing the substance. You may even feel angry at times with yourself and even very disappointed. These feelings are common in recovery. Forgiving yourself is, however, crucial to your recovery. It is crucial in overcoming addiction for you to forgive yourself. Let's look at things that you can do to help you to forgive yourself. The first thing that I would recommend is to change the narrative inside. What I mean with that is self-critique is not going to get you anywhere. It's not going to help you to, to move forward or uh, it's not going to mobilize you to make any changes. It will, in fact, just keep you stuck where you are, where you're going to be continuously feeling guilty, shame, etc. And guilt and shame is not a good place to be at when you're in recovery because those are uncomfortable emotions. So you need to learn how to deal with them and not necessarily how to avoid them. Dealing with them would be looking at changing the narrative in your head. Try and redefine what you are telling yourself and focus on the here and now. Focus on what you have achieved thus far and not necessarily what you did in the past. I'm not saying that you should, you should forget about the past or that we should just um, for, uh, forget, forgive and forget altogether because there is a, a certain part of being reminded um, and being aware of what happened during your uh, abuse. Um, but at the end of the day, you can't continue just making that the narrative in your head. You have to move forward. You have to, to try and focus on what you have achieved and give yourself credit for that. Okay. Secondly, recon recognize why you care. Caring and having um, a conscience is a very, very important part of self-forgiveness. Because if you don't, if it was a matter of that you were a horrible person with no conscience, no feeling whatsoever for anybody else, not worrying what was the impact of your substance abuse on loved ones, family or significant others, then that would be a concern. But to recognize that no one is perfect, including yourself, and that everybody makes mistakes, and that you are already working on changing past patterns would be very important in forgiving yourself. We can't stay stuck in constantly just telling ourselves and um, being reminded of all the things that we did wrong because at the end of the day, when you're in recovery, you are actually busy trying to change the things that you've done wrong. Number three, I would say an important thing is to make amends. This may include apologizing to family members, significant others, friends, and also to thank them for being there. I always tell my patients it's easier to walk away um, when you feel that there's no hope anymore, when you feel your hands are cut off. It's, it's probably easier to walk away and not have to be confronted with the pain and the hurt um, that you see when, when you see your loved one self-destructing. Um, so it is important to go back and to thank them, not only apologize, but also to thank them for being there during the hard time, for not giving up on you, for trying to understand what you are going through and for continuously supporting you um, in the year and now and hopefully going forward. Number four, care for yourself. Taking care of your specific needs and addressing what those needs are is a central part of healing. Um, what I mean by with that is I think very often 
what I see with some of the patients that we have at Stabilis is that they are, are people's pleasers. Um, and because they are people's pleasers, they, they find it difficult to say no, they find it difficult to deal with conflict, um, they don't like to argue, and they end up people pleasing in order to avoid arguments, in order to avoid conflict, in order to avoid rejection. They are always also very scared of rejection. Um, and at the end of the day, this becomes a, a slowly but progressively um, a pattern where, where they feel that they are a failure, that they, they're not good enough, that they are not accepted, that whatever they do will be frowned upon and they have to give more and more and more. Um, so I think when you're in recovery, it is important that you should start taking care of what your needs are also. And if you feel that you're not comfortable in saying yes to something, then don't say yes. When you feel no, say no. Don't say yes, because when you say yes, you are actually neglecting your own needs. Develop a support system. It is really important to have a support system. You can't do this alone going forward. You are going to need people that you can talk to, people that you can trust, people that you know won't necessarily judge you. And unfortunately, I am well aware of the fact that it's not always your family that will take in that role. Um, therefore, there is support groups, there are support groups at, at most of the um, rehabilitation centres um, in the country. There's uh, support groups like the AA, there's online support groups. Um, with most of the, the treatments out there, uh, rehabilitation treatments, there's a follow-up program. I know at Stabilis, for instance, we have a six-month follow-up program. We've got a support group um, called the Survivors Group at Stabilis Centre also, where any of the patients that's, that's successfully completed their program can join um, for ongoing support afterwards. Um, so developing a support system is very important and then deal with your emotions like I said before if your emotional needs are not met you need to communicate that um, if you're feeling sad or you're feeling despondent or um, that you not getting the love and the attention and the care that you that you may need in your relationship you need to learn to communicate those because otherwise your emotional needs will just be left um, unmet and that could potentially leave you wanting a fix or wanting to escape that feeling of emptiness. Um, important, make wellness your priority. Do whatever it takes to have a holistically healthy life. So that would include eating right, having the right diet, exercising, working on your emotional wellness, having friends, taking time out for yourself, um, avoid overworking, uh, avoid pleasing people. So whatever it takes for you to, to have wellness in your life, to feel that you are in control and that, you, um, that your emotional needs are met, that is important to work at whilst you're in recovery because that will keep you in, in control of your emotional health firstly and then secondly of your um, need to want to maintain sobriety. I hope some of these tips will help you in forgiving yourself um, like I said, it is cr a crucial part of recovery. Um, so good luck with that and good luck with your recovery. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.